threatened by even the slightest breeze, yet something holds them even in place. Ever. Oh, something home in some place. It may be nothing more than an intensely strong determination or sense of purpose that keeps the spirits anchored to this world. Finish business. And she has the same thing. The main entrance to the castle is a set of heavy wooden doors. It looks to be fairly solid. It also looks to be entirely unwelcoming. The high stone walls of the castle reach up into the mist above you. You can barely discern the top of the tower several stories up. Dead, twisted trees stand near the castle with curled, claw-like branches. We can talk to the ghosts. Creepy. When you speak to the ghosts, they utter a mournful wail. Uh, I think we better get our cross out, eh? Yoink. You place the silver cross and chain around your neck and wear it as a necklace. Okay. Uh, do we have anything else that would be good against dead things? Maybe a chain. Uh, there's no light to reflect uh. in it, though. Let's just get our sword out, just in case. It's a magic sword, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, whatever. All right. Uh, maybe we can approach the door? As you approach the ghosts wearing the black cloak, they seem to notice you and then begin to drift away towards the cemetery. Okay. Yeah. Well, there they go. Apparently the cemetery is that away. Is there anything over here? No. Let's follow them to the cemetery. Ooh, we like ghosts. Hmm. Oh, okay, let's, uh, yeah, let's save over it, why not? Alright, uh, well, they talk to us here. No, I don't think so. I speak to the ghost, they utter a mournful wail. The cemetery is one of the creepiest you've ever seen. You can't imagine it looking remotely pleasant, even in broad daylight. An icy wind pierces right through your clothes, as you, and you shudder involuntarily. Even with the nice cloak. Yeah. As you step further into the cemetery, you can feel your life force slowly being sucked away by the disembodied spirits. Mm. You suddenly find yourself unable to move. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. The ethereal spirits drain the life force right out of your body. Okay, not the place for You tug with the spirits and find only the graves. We're dead. All right, well, I guess we're not supposed to go that way. The ghosts don't think terribly much of us. Mm -hmm. What is this in the doorway? Main entrance. Okay, well, let's try opening it. As you reach to push the massive door open, you realize there are no handles. The only thing visible is a small keyhole, which slightly resembles a cross. Oh, cross right? Well, isn't that handy? I wonder why those monks would give us the key to the castle. So they want you to kill him. I know. Having an idea, you push the crucifix into the cross-shaped keyhole. It fits. We are click, and the door unlocks. Well, let's keep that around our neck, eh? Now remove. Wear it. Yes. All right, here we go. You push the heavy wooden door open, take a deep breath, and step nervously inside the castle entrance. It's a cute floors. Ooh. The moment you enter the great hall of the castle, you begin shivering uncontrollably, and not just from the cold. This place has an air of death wherever you go. As if creeping around this huge castle was not enough, knowing full well that an undead creature resides here would unnerve even the most stout-hearted of adventurers. You feel desperate to get what you came for, and anxious to leave as quickly as possible. Some barrels and boxes have been stacked here. You presume they are just storage containers, nothing to be concerned about. What are these paintings? The portraits on the wall depict the couple who once lived here. They look young and proud. Behind the mask of apathy that comes with an aristocracy, there is a certain kindness in their eyes. Your lady. The fireplace looks as if it has not been used for quite a long time. You shudder, both from the cold and from the thought that the resident likely has no need of a warm house. You admire the twin chandeliers. You decide that you simply must have replicas made for your own throne room someday. <laughs> As you peer down the hallway, you see numerous doors on either side, all locked, most likely. At the far end, a corridor appears to open into another room. The grand staircase runs up to the left side of the great hall. Grand staircase runs up to the right side. Which way should we go? I don't know. What is that? Oh, it's just sword pillars. Let's yeah. go this way. Okay. Fancy. This is a grand old private library. You can imagine that the literature contained herein would make the town library pale in comparison. Bookcases extend all the way to the high ceiling. But why did he need to be a member of the because he's a bibliophobe. Mm -hmm. This bookcase appears to recount the entire family history of the past counts of Kalima. Mine apparently dates back many, many centuries. Three candelabras provide some welcome illumination in this otherwise dark and dismal castle. These books pertain to the ever-expanding world of science. 
As I skim over the titles, you see one that says, Evidence of a Spherical World. You shake your head. What will they think of next? Hmm. There's a collection of literature dealing with the arrival of the first mages and what became of their descendants, who were and are all mages themselves. Evidently, the Count must be one such descendant, hence his apparent interest in the subject. This marble bust must be of a past Count. While well, it has some resemblance to the current one, the face looks markedly different from that of a town statue. This would appear to be the classic fiction section. Yeah. Velvet curtains draped down along each side of the end, uh, end of the bookcase, adding a certain charm to the room. Oh, do you want to read some books? Oh, yeah. Not interested in a family history lesson, perhaps another time. Science has always been a controversial subject in your mind. You'd rather hang on to the perception of the world that you were brought up with. He's a conservative! Uh. Ah. Even though you would like to read up when Al Daventry's own first king arrived with the others of his kind, you have no more important things to do, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Look around. You have no interest in any of these books right now. Well then, I guess that's all we're doing here in the library. It's a nice looking library. Yeah, it is. So left to right. Whatever. You're in charge of direction. Okay. Let's go left. Hey, it's a shovel. An old shovel rests against the stone wall. It looks well used. Will it fit in your pocket? You take the shovel into your possession. Of hmm. course it does. Let's check out our new shovel. Everything fits in your pocket. The shovel has a wooden handle with a thick metal spade on the end. Ooh. The torches have been mounted to the wall here. There's little to cheer up the place, even when lit. Aren't able to remove the torch from the wall. Hey, maybe we can light our candle. So we can actually have a light source. You hold your candle up to the blazing torch. It catches. Your candle is now lit. Can we use it? You attempt to mold the candle into a wax miniature, but the candle remains unimpressed. Hmm. I guess that's not happening. All right, up we go. Oh, what's this? The window looks out into the island far below. Through it, you see the bricks of the castle might provide some footholds if you were inclined to go swimming. Or climbing. Hmm. Oops. Oh. I am not at the moment. Yeah, no, not really. Well, I guess we got a shovel at least and a lit candle. So that's an improvement. And a uh, possible escape route. Hmm. That or just going through the front door. There's a long dining table completely covered with dust. Scratches scar the legs of the table. Eight chairs have been placed around the table. You have a hard time imagining a joyous company of people celebrating in this cold room. Tattered red velvet curtains hang either side of the northern room. Chandelier graces the ceiling and adds a small degree of light and warmth to this dingy, drafty room. The northern arch opens into a room beyond. You cannot discern any details, though. Oop. All right, let's go in there. This is just a small storage room. Rows of red wine barrels are neatly stacked and piled along the wall. At least you think they contain wine. Seeing nothing else of any real importance, you head back into the dining room. Mm. All right, well, I guess that's it then. La la la. Ooh. These stairs are narrow and slippery. Both, slope, uh, both sides slope away precipitously. You attempt to mold the candle. Can we use our candle? I think you can't use the candle. Yeah, all right. The staircase beyond is very dark. Fortunately, your candle provides just enough light to see where you're going. Oh, apparently it's automatic. Yeah. Yay! Sweet. All right. How much you want to bet this is a good time to save? The cellar. The stairs of doom. Doom. <laughs> the torch has been mounted to the wall here. It does little to cheer up the place, even when lit. Oh, do we actually have anything to kill a vampire? We have a mallet, but I don't think we have a wooden stake. Oh, maybe we could use the wooden picket. Probably. There we go. We'll just have to do that then. But Provided he isn't already awake. Like her husband. Yeah, but he's a vampire. So, maybe you could convince him not to hurt people. A raised stone dais has been built for the sole purpose of keeping the coffin off the ground. Presumably, this makes it easier for the coffin's occupant to climb in and out. Thought gives you the shivers. The lid of the beautifully carved coffin is closed. The torch helps very little to illuminate this damp and dimly lit room. 
Well, uh, shall we uh, open the coffin? Yeah, I guess so. All right, let's have our steak at the ready. I think you just need to chill in the room and all that other stuff. Maybe remind him of his wife. If you think so, the thick black cloak that you are wearing hampers your efforts to lift the coffin lid. Try removing the cloak first. Oh, come on. It's just a cloak. Whatever. You remove the black cloak again. Well, Graham, let's hope you're not a red shirt after all. Nervously, you lift the heavy lid of this elegant coffin. You peek into its red satin interior. The coffin is unoccupied, and you feel relief wash over you. A relief? That means he's awake. You madman! As you prepare to look inside the coffin... King Graham, I presume. You turn on your heel. There, blocking the only exit from this dismal room, stands the Count. His skin is pale, his eyes jet black. He wears a black cloak nearly identical to the one that you possess. You know me? Ah, yes indeed. Sister Hagatha alerted me to your arrival, dear king. Count is tall and elegantly dressed with a black cloak around him. His face and hands are chalk white, and his lips are blood red. There's a rat. There's a beautiful ornate coffin to one side of the eerie room. Dust is everywhere. Cobwebs fill the corners, and a sickly odor permeates the air. Ah, oh, we missed the rat. Okay. Well, let's talk to him. Desperate to stall for time, you query the Count. Sister Hagatha, you say? Who is she? The Count regards you with a suspicious glare. Though I suspect you already know the answer, Hagatha is a charming mage who does as she pleases in this land. Strange. I was not aware a new ruler had been elected. Do not be foolish. Agatha has no interest in the politics of this wretched place. Nor do I, in point of fact. Death tends to diminish one's taste for power. No, at present she is interested in only in one thing, as am I. Your destruction. Uh-oh. Count no longer appears interested in humoring your delay tactics. They're showing the ring. I think we should fight him. Show him the ring. Uh, if you say so. He will not see it too well from where you are, and you have no desire to get any closer. I'm telling you, we gotta fight him. Bring it on, buddy. You fumble to remove your sword from its sheath, but your hands are shaking so badly, you cannot get a decent grip on the hilt. Damn you, Graham. Some action hero you are. Ah! Power Gamer! In an instant, you are flat against the wall. The count as you pin so well, you can't move a muscle, much less put up a defense. Ew. You can feel the count's iron, cold hand on your throat. You have barely seconds before the inevitable happens. Let's take a look at him. The count as you helplessly pin against the wall, the thirsty gleam in his eyes doesn't inspire your confidence. Should we talk to him? The count no longer appears interested in humoring your delay tactics. close enough to show him the ring. You really think we should? I do. Please don't kill us. With difficulty, you manage to loosen the ruby ring from your attire and drop it to the floor. The Count's eyes dart to it quickly, then flash angrily back to you. Where did you get that? The elderly woman who lives in a house to the south of here, near the beach. She gave it to me for helping her. The Count regards you for a moment. His dark eyes bore unendingly into yours, and you feel as if your very soul is bare. What do you know of her? She is not well. I know. Do you think I am not aware of that? You are sweating profusely. Hopefully this vampire doesn't find the odor appetizing. Night is the most... Dangerous of times for my mortal family. I have kept constant vigil over my wife for many years, so that from the darkness no harm would come to her. When her time comes, we will be together forever. Oh, that's sweet. I think tonight will be the night. I have seen her this very eve. I did what I could to help her. But I do not think it was enough. Oof. 
He's a bat now. Na 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 na. <laughs> bat cave. As he watched the giant bat float, uh, fly out of the room, he realized with dread that the Count has confiscated your crucifix. Without it, you are trapped in this castle. Now what are you going to do? Oh no! We are checking out your coffin. Fighting unoccupied, you see the interiors lined with shiny red satin. Um, the thought of anyone sleeping in this coffin makes the hairs on the back of your neck stand on end. A beautiful satin pillow adorns the interior of this ornate coffin. Yoink! At long last, you have located the final gem, the death gem! Yay. Yoink! You breathe deeply, reach out and take the stone in your hands. It is ice cold to the touch, but you don't care. This is the last thing you need to unlock the door of destiny. Now all you have to do is get out of here! Oh, that's kind of put his pillow back. Yeah, we're very considerate that way. Mm -hmm. Considering we came here to murder him. Well, you shouldn't murder him. Well, he was trying to destroy us until he managed to bribe him away with his dying wife. He wants her. I think deep down he's not a bad guy. Yeah. Maybe he just needs to be reminded of his humanity. Oh, really? Yeah. So I don't think we're getting out through the front door, huh? Yeah. Huge wooden doors are locked and you can't open them without the cross key. Here's that you were trapped in this ghastly castle. Up there. Back to the window. Escape window. All right. I wonder if we have a rope or anything for climbing. No, just break glass in case of emergency. Really? Mm -hmm. All right. Escape. Oh, why is my keyboard not working? I don't know. Okay, there we go. Down we go. Seeing no other possible escape route, you climb onto the ledge and carefully lower yourself outside, hoping to find a decent foothold. It's a long way down. Alright, alright. Uh -huh. You're way too busy holding on for dear life. The bricks of the wall are slippery. Be very, very careful. Okay. Can we walk on the vines? Some vines have grown up around the castle. Yeah, I have no idea where we're supposed to go. I'm just going to climb, 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 climb. We are the king of Daventry. Uh oh. Suddenly you hear a swishing noise in your ear. It's joined by two others. Get away from us. You instinctively try to brush whatever it is away, but in doing so, lose your hold in the bricks and fall backwards. Oh, oh no. Graham. Goof. Time slows as you fall, and your world turns black. Oh. oh, hey, there she is. Singing time! When I saw you, I knew it was true. Just the love between us, it won't be torn in two. Once waked from sleep, I'll smile.